Many vegans and vegetarians believe it's an unquestionable fact that animal foods promote an acidic body and osteoporosis. Hello Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Zach here at SecretsOfLongevity.com. As I was saying at the start there, a lot of uh, people from the plant-based or plant-dominant based paradigm do have this idea that animal foods, specifically meat, also dairy and eggs, cause uh, an acidic body that leaches minerals from the bones. And it's so um, drilled into their mind that that's the way things are, that they just state these things and are rarely questioned on it and they seem to think that they don't need to put a reference to that. Or they reference uh, some study that was an epidemiological study on uh, comparing North Americans that are drinking a lot of dairy to some other country in the world where they're not drinking a lot of dairy and they have tons of osteoporosis. Never mind the fact that those people could be working in deplorable conditions, doing very heavy labor, you know, lifting stuff all day or farming, which builds bone density in and of itself because it follows Wolf's Law, which is you need resistance training of some sort or any kind of physical activity to build bone density regardless of calcium and other mineral intake. Wolf's Law takes precedence over diet for bone density. And never mind also the fact that the dairy in North America is generally pasteurized. 98% of it that people are consuming is pasteurized. And they also have horrendous dietary habits that go along with that that aren't controlled. So that's why it's an epidemiological study and that's why it shouldn't apply. So despite that, they still have this idea that, you know, animal food, because it supposedly has an acidic effect as it's going through your digestion or end product after digestion, it's going to leach minerals from your bones. Now that simply is not true from the research I've found and this is going to be a short video, I just want to give you the links in the drop down menu below. If you want to debate this topic with me, definitely post a video response um, as opposed to just commenting and saying some random thing without reference. Post a video response with references and stay away from ad hominem attacks, meaning personal attacks, so that uh, this can be a constructive way that we can really get to the bottom of this issue. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that there's this idea of uric acid coming from animal foods that causes this problems. And people just point to gout saying, you know, people are eating liver and onions all day and they're really high in purine diet and that's going to cause them to have these problems with gout. Now despite, even in epidemiology, that gout is more strongly correlated with starch and fructose consumption, you know, junk foods, and a really high starch, starchitarian diet, as is the North American standard diet, and that's more strongly correlated with gout than animal foods are, people still have this idea that gout's connected to this. Now the first link below, which is link number one, and you can just go down and you'll see link in brackets one, two, three, four, all the way down to six, uh, for the links that I'm talking about, it is a PubMed uh, research study and it's talking about humans producing xanthine oxidoreductase, which is a key catalyst in the final synthesis of uric acid. So humans have a very low output of that compared to other animals and even compared to other apes. So this is indicative that over our evolutionary history, the gene that was responsible for producing this got suppressed because we were consuming animal foods. So this is kind of like a cat in the sense that they just comparing the oxidoreductase uh, production, I'm not saying we're like cats in terms of needing to eat a diet like cats or dogs, but carnivores and even omnivores that eat a lot of animal foods have a lowered oxidoreductase um, production, genetically speaking, because they've evolved with that animal foods in there. And that allows them to make less uric acid as per the intake of animal foods compared to an herbivore, which would have a very high spike of uric acid production if they're consuming those animal foods. So yes, you eat animal foods, you're going to have uric acid production. You don't eat animal foods, if you eat beans, you're going to have uric acid production. Um, our body has a, basically a thermostat to be able to regulate that production output. The next link, link number two below, is um, a trial, a dietary trial, showing that a higher intake of protein actually stopped and reversed uh, gout attack symptoms in people who had gout. So this was a pretty small, only 7 out of 12 patients, and the other ones 
didn't actually negatively affect them. So it's not making it worse, a higher protein diet, but it's not making it better. But that's a little over half actually had uric acid levels come down when they increased the protein, animal protein consumption. And then a third link, which is another medium-sized study, which shows the same thing. Protein goes up, uric acid level actually drops. So this goes against the idea that you're consuming animal foods and you're just jacking your uric acid levels up. We have very complicated biology and you can't just make these blanket statements about what goes in immediately affects the body by increasing that in the body. It's the same idea with cholesterol. Like We can eat pure butter and our cholesterol will barely move. Then link number four, we're getting into the realm of osteoporosis here. You can see that what's being shown is that calcium levels aren't particularly affected when you increase protein, but calcium excretion is because it's lowered, so that means you're increasing bone density by increasing protein. And how this happens is that IGF-1 levels go up a bit. So IGF-1 is an important uh, androgenic hormone, uh, pre-hormone, I guess. It improves the production of HGH. And that is very implicit in increasing bone density, something we need to maintain good bone density. People will come up with the idea that cancer is fed by IGF-1 tumors. And yes, in a petri dish, outside of the body, when you give it direct, concentrated IGF-1, you're going to stimulate the growth of a tumor. But in the body, when we're athletic, healthy, and doing all these things correctly, we do need IGF-1, and we need it to be at an elevated level if we want to be in an anabolic state. So if you're specifically suffering from cancer, yes, you don't want to be jacking up the protein to unheard of levels. You want to be following a pro protocol that's specific for um, cancer prevention. And that could be going to the Hippocrates Institute, that could be Yes, still eating animal foods, but really drastically cutting out all sugar and increasing green food intake, juices. Um, there's plenty of resources on the internet to find out how to approach that. But uh, just because someone at the peak of their disease shouldn't be doing this one thing doesn't mean if you're healthy, you, uh, that also applies to you. Because when you're at different places with your health, you need different things. That's just the way the body works. Link number five below is a study on postmenopausal women who are traditionally known to have decreasing bone density as they age and you can easily see with that study that with the higher protein intake they actually improved their bone density and it wasn't dropping as fast as the ones the women who weren't following as high of a protein diet and then the sixth one is just giving a bit of a better perspective it's showing uh, improves in calcium balance in the young and the old uh, so sort of sort of going on the other side of that postmenopausal women side of things and looking at older men and women and younger men and women and seeing both improving their bone density and calcium scores uh, with the consumption of animal protein. And so what this does is it reduces the output of calcium. So it's not adding calcium to the diet, it's not doing anything to um, alter the way we absorb calcium, it's actually just retaining the calcium our body already has and reducing the frequency and speed at which we excrete it. So this completely goes against the idea that consuming animal foods is acidic and thus causing the leaching of bones from the uh, skeletal system. Yes, it might be acidic, but that doesn't mean it's the worst thing in the world. If we're seeing improves in bone density, then we have to throw out that paradigm of alkaline versus acidity and only eating alkaline food and never touching acidic food because it's obviously been proven wrong. Dr. Robert Young, the pH miracle guy, is recommended people eat 12 avocados for a stable food if they're athletic. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, both in terms of being such a concentrated fat source with very little protein and very few carbohydrates in there. It's just not realistic as a long-term sustainable health program. So be open about other possibilities and be open to changing that paradigm. And if you're interested in consuming some animal foods, check out the link below to go to US Wellness Meats and you can get some great pasture-raised animal foods which are going to have a lot less impact on your health negatively than factory farmed, non-organic, grain-fed animals will. In fact, they'll be building to your health. They'll be positive in the outcomes that you'll find with the consumption of these. So like and favorite this video, share it on other people's videos that are making these blatant comments without scientific references. And with that, take care and embrace life without limits.